Our text for today is fairly short on this New Year's Day, this Sunday. It's from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. Just four verses at the beginning of Luke, chapter 21. It's a familiar passage, maybe not one we expect on New Year's Sunday, but an important text nonetheless. I invite you to hear these words, read along, follow along as we hear God's word together. Luke tells us, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this word today. Well, Jessica and the children were talking a little bit this morning about New Year's resolutions. I don't know if you're a resolutions person or not. I imagine some of you may be. Some of you may have come up with some resolutions that you want for this new year. Others may be not. Um, some say as a blessing, may your troubles this year last as long as your resolutions. I think that's probably pretty good, right? Someone else said, a resolution is something that goes in one year and out the other. So, I don't know. Well, if you are a resolutions person and you haven't come up with yours yet, I read some interesting resolutions that maybe you might want to consider or maybe not. Here's what some people say they're going to do in 2023. In 2023, I plan to order every drink on the Starbucks menu. Yeah. Another person said, I resolve to avoid taking a shower whenever possible to conserve water. Another, I like this one. My goal is not to tell the same story at every get-together this coming year. That one applies to me pretty well. Another said, my plan is to do less laundry and use more detergent or more deodorant, actually. That's what it is. And another said, my New Year's resolution is to stop hanging out with people who ask me about New Year's resolutions. That's probably pretty good. Well, whether you are a resolutions person or not, today is a good day to be thinking about our lives. Today is a good day to be evaluating how do we spend our time? How do we spend our lives? How do we use this gift of life that God has given to us? What changes might we want to make? Some of you have heard me talk about Rosie before. Rosie was a patient at the psychiatric unit of Norton Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky when I worked there. She was the first patient I met on my first day on the job there. And Rosie was the kind of person who could stare at you and she could strike fear in your heart. Well, I didn't need that because I was already nervous enough. It was my first day on the job on the psychiatric unit. I didn't know anything about working in a hospital. I knew even less about working in a psychiatric unit. But Rosie was the first person who I met. And as she stared at me, my nervousness became fear. Then she spoke and things got worse. Who are you? She growled at me. I tried to speak, but I remember that my mouth just wasn't working right. I couldn't get words to come out of my mouth. I was too nervous. I was too frightened. And so Craig, the coworker whom I had just met, quickly came to my rescue. And, and, and Craig said to Rosie, he said, Rosie, this is someone you need to get to meet. He's going to be working with us for a while. You need to be nice to him. You need to get to know him. His name is Kevin Head. Well, there was a rather long pause. And Rosie continued to stare at me. But after a few moments, Rosie started smiling and she, I thought, was warming up to me. So I was feeling a little bit better about things until I noticed that Rosie's smile was turning into laughter. 
Rosie was no longer just smiling at me, but now she was audibly laughing at me while she looked at me. Well, I was just ready to go home. It was a terrible, terrible feeling. But then Rosie began to speak, and I braced myself for what I knew was going to be a cruel comment about me, how I looked, how I talked, something bad about me. But Rosie said something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. Rosie looked me square in the eyes, and she said, Son, I just want to tell you, in all my life, I ain't never heard of nobody named Cabbage Head. I know some of you have heard me tell that before, but on this Sunday morning, it came to my mind again. Rosie, from that time forward, became a very good friend to me. Rosie and I talked when I would go in to work in the hospital, and we became good friends in spite of the fact she called me cabbage the rest of the time that she was there. But as Rosie talked to me, she shared her story with me, and it's one of the saddest stories I've ever known. Rosie had no friends. She was mentally and emotionally handicapped. She was poor, uneducated. She was in the hospital because she was severely depressed, and her depression in part stemmed from the fact that her family completely neglected her. Rosie was an embarrassment to her family. I remember many things about her. She had a special impact on my relatively young life, but one of the things that really stands out to me more than anything else were the questions that Rosie often asked when we talked. She would say to me something like this as we talked, she would say, Cabbage, you, you go to that school, you read those books, you're at seminary. Why can't I be happy? What's the point of all this? What am I supposed to do when I leave here? I was young and I thought I knew everything about life. But I didn't have many answers for Rosie. Her questions grabbed me. They, they caught hold of me. They wouldn't let go of me. And I struggled and struggled as a young seminary student to, to try to figure out how could I possibly answer these questions. What is the point of all this? What do we think when we evaluate our lives? How do we measure our lives? Novelist Ursula Le Guin writes, we as human beings are measurers. That's what we do. That's who we are. We are measurers. We are people who go around putting tapes and measures on things. We, we dice things up. We divide them. We segment them. That's what we do with this incredible gift called life. We find ways to, to measure it. We, we even measure our time, she says. We live by clocks and calendars. Uh, we don't know how to function without watches or phones or alarms. We divide the day not not just into hours, but into half hours and quarter hours and minutes. We take this beautiful gift called life and we cut it up. We segment it. We measure it away. I'm told that years ago an African student came to the United States to study and after being here for a while studying, the professor asked the student, can, can you tell me the biggest difference between your life in Africa and your life in the United States? And the student didn't even have to think. He answered the professor by saying, God gave Africans time. God gave Americans watches. The text we read for this morning tells us about a poor but faithful woman. We learn a little about how she lived this gift called life. She came to the temple one day to give an offering. She was poor, but 
According to the story that Luke tells us, this poor but faithful woman, she didn't measure her offering. She just gave. She gave all she had to give. Luke tells us others gave more that day, but they gave out a surplus. They measured, they diced it up, they segmented it out, and they doled it out in that way. They were willing to give what they were willing to spare, but, but not this woman. This woman didn't measure, she didn't divide, she just gave. She just lived. Wouldn't you like to live that way? Just freely living, giving, not measuring, dicing, doling out, but, but just living. The Counting Crows, the band, has a song. It's called A Long December. In that song, they, they sing these words. It's been a long December and there's reason to believe that maybe this year will be better than the last. And then they sing. I can't remember all the times I tried to tell myself to hold on to these moments as they pass. I wonder if the act of giving it frees these places in our lives so that we create opportunity where we can hold on to and treasure that which we value. I think that's what scripture means when it tells us Mary pondered these things in her heart. About 30 years ago, in the first little church I pastored in the farmlands of rural Kentucky, there was a single mother who lived with her mother in what was literally a tiny shack in the middle of the woods. This mother and grandmother were raising three children on very little financial resources. They began, they began attending our small little rural church and though they never asked for anything, Sometimes people in the church knew they were struggling and they were occasionally able to give them some food and some clothes and a little bit of furniture. Well, about a week or so before Christmas, the, the younger woman, the mother, asked if I could stop by their home just for a moment sometime that week before Christmas. So I said I would. So. Later that week, I found myself driving down the little dirt road that went to their dilapidated shack. And as I drove down that little road, I, I found myself wondering how I was going to answer her request that I assumed was going to come. Uh, this woman was too proud to ask me for help at church. I knew that, but I knew they needed things. And so she just wanted me to stop by and maybe ask for a little bit of help at the holidays. And I was trying to think, our church, our little church doesn't have a benevolence fund. What could we possibly do? And I was thinking of all these things, driving down this little road. And I pulled up to their home and I got out and was still thinking about this when I walked up to the door and before I even got to the door to knock on the door, the, the woman opened the door. She said, you can come in if you'd like, but there's really nowhere to sit. I, I just wanted to give you this. So she handed me a brown paper bag. It was a ruffled up, soiled brown paper bag. And she said, it ain't that much, but I just wanted to give it to you. Go ahead, open it, she said. So I took that ruffled up brown paper bag and I opened it up and reached in and pulled out a plain white t-shirt. Wasn't in packaging, it was just a plain white t-shirt. In fact, it had a little tear right here in the chest. And she said to me, I wanted to give you something for Christmas, but I ain't got no money. But I found this t-shirt. I bought it for my father last year for Christmas. 
but he died before I could give it to him. So when I found the t-shirt, I just wanted you to have it. It ain't much, but Merry Christmas. I loved that t-shirt. I loved wearing that t-shirt. I wore that t-shirt with a hole in the chest for years. And you know, every time I put that t-shirt on, I smiled. There's a reason to believe that maybe this year will be better than the last. Someone said this, put in all the living that you have, put it all in, and what you get is a life beyond measure. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we pause this morning on the first day of this brand new year. We pause mindful of the precious gift that you've given to us that we call life. We did nothing to earn it, nothing to deserve it, but every breath we take reminds us that this life is a gift. Help us to cherish it to soak it up, to breathe it in, and to give it away. I pray for our church. I pray for our church in this coming year. May we receive this gift of life and cherish it and share your good news with others. I pray also for the individuals and for the families who are here this morning and for those who are watching online. Bless each of us during this year. Help us that instead of measuring our lives, help us to give and to give freely. Inspire us to work with each other. And throughout the course of this year, help us to remember that even when we cannot do great things, we can do small things in great ways. Help us, like the wise men, to follow your guidance and presence every day of this new year as we seek to give our lives away. For we pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.